welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep dot com. My name is Jason Newland, and this is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. Please only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes. And I'm just reading a <clears throat> I'm reading a magazine called Real People. So I'm just gonna read through it today and I just bought it, it cost 75 pence and from the looks of it, it's on the front cover, oh Andre's just popped out to do a, a toilet, Oh. That was funny, I just watched him and he was doing, his tail pops up, it really sticks up when he's doing a, a you know, a thingy, but it looked like the back of his body was levitating, but it wasn't, but it just looked like that a bit, because the way he was pushing his back of the body up. Right, see my first, I suppose I should just tell you what this podcast is about for those of you that have not um, been lucky enough to have experienced an hour with me uh, in these Let Me Bore You To Sleep recordings. So this is, I think it's 149, I think, the episode, something like that. And I've been doing these since the beginning of 2018. I'm not sure what month it was that I actually started, but... I try to do them every day, but I do them regularly. But is regularly, if it's regularly, does that mean it has to be the same time every day or the same day every week? I don't know. I'm not always able to stick to a, like a military precision timing you know for when they are released but I do try and my aim is to record one per day and I've also got a couple of other well, I've got well, I've got quite a few podcasts for sleeping as well as other ones for pain relief and relaxation and I've got a self-help one which is full of individual sessions for things like nail biting and helping people to stop self-harm and lots of different things, smoking and that. Um, so yeah, if you just go to Spreaker.com and put in my name, uh, loads of podcasts will come up. But um, the ones that I spend the most time on producing new recordings for this one, the Deep Sleep Whisper Hypnosis podcast, and that's, uh, I try to do one regularly also, every day when I can, but I don't always manage to do it every day. And I've got another one which is the 
Sleep with no, what is it? <laughs> Sleep Hypnosis Weekly, which I release a new recording every Friday. So that's a little bit easier for me because, at least in a sense, I know that there's only one to do per week, and I'm I'm managing to do that. But those ones are long, uh, so the deep sleep whisper ones usually last about twenty minutes. Sometimes longer, sometimes shorter, but around that time. The sleep hypnosis weekly on Fridays, that podcast lasts for at least an hour. That was my aim for that. But it's not a whisper, it's me talking. And these ones last for about an hour and it's not hypnosis. It's just me talking really. And the thing is with hypnosis, some people would say there's no such thing as hypnosis. Some people would say that everything is hypnosis. So, you know, a lot of it to do is to do with belief. Um, you know, it's the thing is, if you believe it, you can achieve it. It's uh, belief is pretty much the most powerful thing that we have as humans uh, some may say well what about nuclear missiles yeah I'm not talking about powerful what about a tank no, no, I'm not talking about powerful physically like strength I'm talking about powerful in a way of being able to change our lives and affect Change and just make our make us you know increase our happiness. I mean that's got to be a nice thing, isn't it? It's got to be a so believing. And for me, it's about believing facts, believing the fact that you can sleep better, have better sleep wake up when you wake up feeling replenished you know feeling uh, and that feeling of maybe feeling tired I mean I feel tired when I wake up I don't jump out of bed singing and dancing I mean I don't expect myself to do that some people do I'm sure but I like to wake up with expectations and interest for the day ahead. I mean, the thing that I'm, but my life is around, based around these podcasts and the online free hypnosis service that I provide. So when I wake up, I'm thinking, I wonder, uh, how many people have downloaded the recordings overnight? Have I had any messages? Uh, I checked the Facebook, uh, you know, those kind of things. So that's what I'm interested in, and that gets me out of bed. Well, doesn't actually my bladder gets me out of bed because I need to do a wee, but that's always been the case. It's not. It's not a new thing. I was born with a bladder, so it's just. Uh, it's a little bit more prominent as I've got older. I'm just looking at this magazine and I'm really, oh yeah, also these these recordings, it's just me being boring. It is what it says on the label, literally, let me bore you to sleep. And the thing is, the more you listen to me, you just get used to hearing my voice and it, it's like a you press a button and you just feel tired and sleepy and just want to go to sleep which is why I recommend regardless of what recordings you listen to, whatever podcast it is of mine only listen when you can safely close your eyes 
because if you're used to listening to these or any of my sleep podcasts then chance you know you 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 might listen to me and it might just be me talking about I don't know the wonders of milk bottles it might be a really interesting talk that I'm doing and like that and you may feel tired listening and I'll be honest yesterday's recording for the deep, for this one the let me boy to sleep I fell asleep doing it and I really struggled to keep my it wasn't a case of keeping my eyes open because I had my eyes closed when I was doing it anyway and most of the time I do although at the moment because I've got a magazine in front of me I find the easiest way to read stuff is with my eyes open um, so I my mind was proper falling asleep last night when I made that recording so I've got my glasses on but unfortunately the light is shining in the wrong direction so I have to have the thing but really I was going to get the dandy or Wizard and Chips or Beano you know the kids comics this magazine is kind of like a, it's really bright and colourful uh, it's called Real People so at the top it says only 75 pence and it's like with in yellow uh, it's, the 75 pence is yellow it's in a blue circle the only is red bold capitals with white outlay outline and then bargain underneath and it's real people bursting with real life it says and it's number 19 which makes me think I reckon it's weekly so it's a new magazine it's only been around for 19 weeks unless it's monthly but they've got the 16th of May 2019 date if it was monthly it probably wouldn't it put like May 2019 anyway it looks really nice you know the cover's all colourful and there's a picture of a, a a lady with a, a little boy smiling the heads pushed together they're not conjoint well they wouldn't be with their different ages but um, you know they they look happy below that is another woman and a boy uh, her son I guess cuddling they look happy uh, there's a lady on the left in a sun bathing she's sunbathing she looks happy and a couple of kids they look happy cuddling toys until you actually read what the headline is for each of those sections and I'm not going to read them because they're horrible they're really like the kind of stuff you see in newspapers that you don't want to read that these don't you know and it's like oh that's really incongruent and if you want to know what it says on the front cover then you can google it real people number 19 date 5th to 6th 16th for the 5th 19 by the way just you might not know this but in the UK we do our dates different to the way you that other countries might do it in America you do it the, I was going to say the wrong way around but you do it a different way to us see our 
um, the day is before the month. In America, the month is before the day. So in America, that would be 5, 5th of the 16th, 19, instead of 16th, 5, 19. Just thought I'd uh, let you know that in case you didn't. Okay, so let's have a look. Um, okay, that's nothing there. On the cover, okay, I can't read that one. For me, for this to be positive, I can't, I want it, to, I don't want to read about horrible stuff, so I definitely don't want to read it out. So I can't read that one either, so six. One, two, three, four. Okay, I can read the one that's... Um, no, that one. I can't read that one. <laughs> this is terrible, isn't it? Real life. Plus the weeks. Okay, cookery. Honeymoon hitches. The best laid plans. Ah. Oh. Quick reads, shopping. Okay, a map. Okay, that's okay. I'm not can't read that. Health and happiness. Travel, time. Okay, I'm gonna read that because again, that's that's obsessed with horrible stuff. I'm not buying this magazine again. I don't know when. When murder became entertainment, I know it's been a long time, you know, Murder She Wrote, TV programs, and all the different programs, you know, with that title, with it in the title, but I don't, don't, you know, I don't, it's not that I think that entertainment should just be little bunny rabbits running around, but. Your stars, fashion, I'm with the band, Bob's Big Treasure Hunt, Puzzle Trail, well I'm not going to do that, I don't do puzzles. So let's have a look. So here's a comedy tot. You go girl. My niece Layla, 18 months, is following her dad and grandparents when it comes to being a biker. Look, she's even uh, perfected her stern biker face. But the bikers have to have a certain face. The thing is, see, I'm in England, right? And again, I don't know what the rules are in every other country. But in England, you are not allowed to ride a motorcycle of any kind without a helmet. So, as far as having a perfect biker face, you can't see a biker's face anyway. So that doesn't even make sense. And that baby's far too young. And then it says, so it's got a little baby with sunglasses on. On a, what well, only looks like some kind of a wooden or plastic, like, oh, oh it's a, it's like a rocking chair, but with a, a bike instead of a horse. Because you know how horses rock. Very realistic. And uh, it's a little bubble talk thing, you know, where he's supposed to be speaking. And there's a big radiator behind him for some reason. And it says, I'm a wheelie cool babe. So this is the comedy top. Guaranteed to make you smile. Yeah, the, the, the headline is Our Mad World. So that's, this is the the comedy section of the magazine 
Okay, in UK, this is the one now. George, thought to be Britain's oldest goldfish, has gone to the big bowl in the sky, aged an incredible 44. Owner Keith Allies, 75, one George and another goldfish, Fred, at a fair in 1974. Fred died two years ago and the pair have been buried together. What didn't make me smile, it, it, it was sad really. And I mean, you know, like, oh, you know, not sad as in uh, sarcastically sad, but just 44 years. The thing is, goldfish can grow so big. That must have been the size of a size of a house. British Airways is looking into how a flight destined for Dusseldorf ended up in Scotland by mistake. Passengers thought it was a joke when the pilot did the welcome to Edinburgh speech. The hapless pilot even asked for a show of hands as to who wanted to go to Germany. What does hapless mean? The hapless pilot and uh, I remember hearing that story it's a few weeks ago so it's quite a funny story well I think they just got I'm not sure why they ended up there I, I listened to the story and then I just carried on whatever else I was doing knitting or whatever I was doing Oh, look, lean cuisine. Dietitian George Hamlin Williams. No need for double-barreled names. Just just one, one name, that's all we need. Has done all the hard work finding your healthiest options for eating out. You know, if I meet someone with, and they tell me that they've got two names at the beginning. So double-barreled names, I don't really... I don't acknowledge, but um, it doesn't really matter because we don't. I don't address anyone by their surname. Um, but when someone's got a double-barreled first name, you know, I asked a boss called Sarah Jane once. And I said, no, you get one first name. You don't get two first names. You get one first name. I'm not... Where does it end? You start giving our, our children like 17 first names. You know, we shout out to someone. Oh, uh, Bob, Jason, Richard, Andrew, Se uh, Sebastian, uh, or... Uh, Rodriguez, you're trying to remember all the names. Uh, you know, by the time you get to to remember halfway through, the bus has hit him. You know, he's like, he's like, oh, he's trying to save his life, but it's no one name. That's all everyone gets. One name. I am the name police. Apart from Billy Joe Saunders. Because he's a boxer, so I would happily call him Billy Joe or Sir or whatever he wanted me to. Because I'd be too scared not to. USA, a Michigan man who moved in with his parents for 10 months after his divorce is now suing them. Why? It says because they chucked out his stash of pornos. I didn't see that coming, actually. Neither did he. Neither did they. There's a pun there somewhere. 
12 boxes full of mucky movies gone and he wants £67,000 compensation. Well, that's a bit of a sticky situation, isn't it? Wow, can you imagine taking your parents to court and standing in court as an adult? I want my pawn back. I miss my pawn. My mummy and daddy threw away my pawn. I mean, you. I mean, first of all, you'd need to have a list of every single movie in twelve boxes. I suppose if it's if it's DVDs, that's a lot. Depends how big the boxes are. The boxes might only be like five inches wide. See? When I think of boxes, I'm thinking, oh, big storage boxes. But we don't know, do we? He may be valuing each DVD movie at like $700 each. And they're not. It probably doesn't even cost that much to make them. I was going to say I made one on a phone once, but it wasn't really a movie. It was more a quickly film while she's busy. <laughs> no, that's, that sounds bad. Um, while she's not looking. Um, no. So I'll move on. Uh, I don't think... I think it's a shame... To... For the, to... I just... I think it's a shame. They're parents. They're his parents. Yeah? And he's their son. I think it's a shame... To let anything... Come between them. That's what I think. Wow. Uh, so LOL Lemur shows you this. Mix Lemurs. Oh, Mix. I thought it was a name. I was about to go into one of that. Mix Lemurs. I don't know what that is. And yoga. And what do you get? Oh, lim Lima. That's it's the animal. You get Limoga, silly. Spa Hotel Armathwaite Hall has invited a group of Madagascan ring-tailed lemurs from a nearby wildlife park to join their yoga classes. They love a long stretch and naturally adopt the lotus pose to warm their bellies in the sun. The Lake District's hotel owner, Caroline Graves, says, Lemoga offers our guests the chance to feel at one with nature. The only thing that I'm thinking about is, first of all, I don't think a lemur needs help from a human being on how to feel at one with nature. And uh, secondly, how do you invite a groom, a group of Madagascan ring-tailed lemurs? It's a hotel, and they said they invited them from a nearby wildlife park to join their yoga classes. I mean, how how does that even happen? I mean, you can't... What, this sent... What? Email? Text? 
Facebook. I mean, what, how how do you invite them? Do you dress up as a lemur? Hold up a I don't know a poster or something saying yoga over there. Humans are doing weird stuff again. You want to come along? You get yourself in a magazine and get pictures taken. You get to learn about nature from the humans. Yeah. So the one China, a bride and groom, found themselves in the middle of the mother of all awkward moments when the bloke's ex crashed the ceremony dressed in a wedding gown begging for a second chance okay but the next bit I don't understand the wedding MC said perhaps this is the reality of love I don't get that. I don't... Is is that a joke? Is it... A bride and groom found themselves in the middle of the mother or... When the bloke's ex crashed to so many dressed in a wedding gown. So it's... I don't... Yeah. That must be quite annoying when that happens. I mean, I've never been married... I've never um, been at a marriage, you know, I've never been the focus of a marriage ceremony. Not like constantly. I've, as you know, I, I like to fart in public places, so I get a little bit of attention, but it's just doesn't last long. Sometimes the attention isn't actually at me. It's just the general attention in the room. You know, like, what the hell was that? And it's like, whoa. But that works better in the summer. thing is, to be, to be fair, even in the winter, you get enough people in the room, you can let one off, and it ruins everything. <laughs> it's, it's great. But that's just me. The love of farts, that's going to be my autobiography. Here's the next one. Filthy rich. The world has officially gone mad. If you want proof, then cough up £615 and buy a pair of gooky screener distressed effect trainers. Which means trainers designed to look filthy, worn, and second hand and then they say after that what a dirty business hmm by the way trainers in England I think you, as far as I'm aware in other countries they may be called sneakers don't know why and they may also be called trainers as well. I'm not sure. But we don't call them sneakers here. But some, I think some younger people who don't realise that it's, they might be on social media and I think they might know the, not know the difference between American and England. Like, uh, what do they call it? Equalism? Um, you know, ways of saying things. I heard someone, a couple of things I've noticed with younger people is, I'm talking like little kids and stuff, is, um, oh, my niece, she says Santa. See, when I was a kid, we grew up, it was Father Christmas. But she uses the American term Santa instead of Father Christmas, which is English. Well, it's, just what we kind of adopted 
uh, to say. And then I heard someone said Z instead of Z. See, in England we say Z, we don't say Z. Z is, this just doesn't, it's not applicable in this country. It's just like some words are spelled different, you know, in England and than they are in America. Uh, or root is pronounced is pronounced route in in America wrongly, and the so what's his name? What's the the rapper? Jay Z. So you in America they call him Jay Z. We call him Jay Z here. And I know it probably sounds a bit weird if you're used to calling him Jay Z, but it's Jay Z because I don't know. We, we value education, I suppose. I don't know. Trying to keep hold of the the English language as for as long as possible, but it is going. I think, especially with text speak and Facebook. What? People don't seem to like to actually say words anymore. It's like uh, I I struggle a little bit with it because I I like to say more words uh, than uh, ever necessary, and I've had people send me a message on Facebook or. Twitter or by text and they don't they just put instead of three words they just put the beginnings of each word as if I'm supposed to know what it means and even if I do know what it means I refuse to allow myself to know what it means because I believe that the word should be written not written handwritten but just otherwise what we might as well just do the whole thing just beginning of each letter I mean there's enough miscommunication when we communicate really well there's still miscommunication because people are thinking inside their own heads and they miss you know misinterpret but we're just making it harder I love to moan I'm such a moany birthday boy my possum Cavachon Banjo likes to be made a fuss of for his birthday here he is celebrating being seven in style Um. That is a cute picture. It's a really cute picture. It's, so they've got a little dog sitting in a chair. There's a candle with a number seven. And he's got his hat, a beautiful little hat. Oh, it's a nice picture. South Africa. And uh, there's another one. Uh... No, that's not interesting. It's not supposed to be interesting, is it? But I had my limits. So I'm going through the magazine and it's just horrible stories. Oh, that's horrible. So that's what I was saying. I don't know if it's the same in other countries. Again, I, I do find it's interesting because I, I don't. I suppose going online, I can find out what's going on in other countries and each, each pretty much each town of like the the Western world. I don't know. Maybe the same in other parts of the world have you know pretty much a website. Uh, and a newspaper with you know the, what's going on in their town 
so it's on the websites and stuff so anyone with enough time on their hands could find out what's going on in pretty much every town in America, Australia, New Zealand uh, and all the different towns probably in Europe including England Scotland, Wales Norwich and uh, I do wonder if it's if it's the same in other other countries like with the magazines if it's just all horrible stuff do people like to read horrible and I say horrible it's real life but it's there's no nice stories well not yet I've not found anything nice Again, another one. So that's not nice, that's horrible. Okay, the story, so in the infidelity, so that's not interesting. I'll pay 75 pence for this. See, this looks funny. But it's not. Again, this... Oh. And I know the magazine... And without... You could say it sounds sexist, but this is not aimed at men. The magazine is not aimed at men. Although I bought it, because I'm not. But it's, it's, it seems to be really kind of quite family uh, stories about children and uh, about really just... I've spent a lot of time around men over the years and I've never once ever seen one of them bring out a magazine like this during the lunch break or coffee and said oh I need to read Woman's Own but there's not much for men I know this you know was trying to move towards a more Uh, kind of healthier outlook and inclusion for men and women to to stop being so separate and you know to be more sharing in what they do and to not have the to categorize males and females in that stereotypical way but I can't, I can't imagine, to be fair, I can't really imagine anyone wanting to read this, female or male. And also you can tell it's not for men, because they've not put lots of, and it's ridiculous, but it's true. Magazines that are aimed at men have lots of females in them, pictures of women. Because apparently that's all men want to do is just look at pictures of women. And well, sometimes it might be true, but I think when it comes to reading a magazine... 
I don't need pictures of women to read a magazine or read a newspaper. I mean, there's lots of, apparently I've been told, there's lots of pictures of men and women on the internet if you were that way inclined to want to look at said pictures. So... Right, another horrible story. So I've got through, I'm now at page 27, and it's mainly been... And there's a crossword puzzle, which is absolutely not my thing. Today, Sasha's son's cuddly toys lost will be a... Uh, that's boring, nothing there. I was hoping it'd be something mildly interesting to read. Boring enough, interesting enough for me, but boring for you, but it's something that I can at least. I might as well read me stars. Should we read the stars for the entire, for everyone? This is for the week 9th to the 15th of May. Aries. Actually, I'm just going to read my own. Virgo. Just do it. Whether it's mastering a new skill or exploring a new place. Shaking up your routines should feel invigorating. And then it says, time to try. Visiting a local market or gallery for inspiration. That's actually really positive, isn't it? The whole thing there was really positive. Nothing to do with the stars. Just, you know, and that sort of superstition stuff, but it's it's a lovely message, isn't it? Just do it. Whether it's mastering a new skill or exploring a new a new place, shaking up your routine should feel invigorating. I mean, that's something that's good advice to anybody, regardless of uh, when you were born, what month you were born. Yeah, that's what I would say. And I would read some of the others, but I can't be bothered. I think Leo is supposed to be quite a good one for me. If I was... Which I'm not superstitious at all. So I don't really... You know, I think it's good to get rid of those things. If at all possible. In order to be... An adult. So, Leo... Uh, so that's for the 24th of July till the 23rd of August. And mine is Virgo, 24th of August to the 23rd of September. So, Leo, Virgo. Ah, oh, 23rd of September. Okay. So, Leo, it says. Breakthroughs are written in the stars and with Venus and Jupiter forming a lucky trine. Help should appear when needed. What on earth is a trine? Lucky is T R I N E. Trine? Trine? Never heard of that word before. Time to try. Linking up with old friends this weekend. Nope. And, well, it's not me anyway, is it? But. 
Yeah, so Leo. Yes, I read somewhere that Leos are supposed to be quite a good match for me in certain aspects. Not for me personally, but people. It's the idea is like every single person born between the 24th of August and the 23rd of September. Everybody. Every human being born during those days, you know, in that period of the month. All around the world, no matter where you're born, no matter what your situation, have all got the same horoscope. Yeah. Let me think. That sounds a bit silly. But I know some people are really into that stuff, but I'm not into it, but if I met somebody this is again me being shallow, I love being shallow. If I met the most amazing woman who for some reason liked me and I liked her and she said to me what's your star sign JJ and I'd say because I wouldn't I wouldn't go into a like Oh, it's all rubbish, silliness, superstition. I'd say, oh, I'm a Virgo. And if she said, ah, oh, we're compatible because I am a Leo. Or whatever star sign she says. At that point, you know, she says, and I'd say, ah. And she says, do you believe in star signs? And I'd say, yes. I love them. I always read my horoscopes. Have done since I was two months old. I was born. I remember when I was, when I was born, I was what, about three weeks old. And... My mother came into the into my uh, cot and looked at me and said, "What are you doing, JJ?" And I looked up and I said, "I'm drawing my horoscope, Mummy. I, I'm." And she said, "How? Why's? Where's the roof gone?" And I said, "I knocked it down so I could see the stars, so I could keep a track of my horoscope and all the alignments of the stars." And uh, I think it's about that time that they got me exercised. But yeah, the exorcism took place. What will you choose, the puckets or the bucks? The pucks or the bucks? I don't know what that's about. So this is Big Deal Money Pot. You could win 200 and 56 pound now I'm guessing they don't have a lot of money to play with if that's their uh, golden pot of money but it's probably a bit more realistic isn't it than like a hundred thousand pound I'd feel like I'm more likely to win Two hundred and fifty-six pound. Uh, and I come to page thirty-two. Real crime. Yep, another horrible, horrible story. So I'll get rid of that. And now, oh, just for fun. Q 
give your brain a boost and pit your wits against these testing teasers. See page 35 for the answers. All right, I'll just go to page 35. Saves me doing the quiz, doesn't it? Right, so don't need to bother with that. Actually, let me look at the picture, see if I can figure it out without having to put any effort in. Can you, there's two pictures. There's, they're identical, well, they're kind of identical pictures. And uh, can you spot six differences between these two photos? So you've got 10 minutes to do it from hit TV drama, The Widow. So it's an advert for The Widow, a TV show, whatever that is. Well, I know what a TV show is, but I don't know the program. As this one's just for fun, see if you're right, see page 35. Six. Okay, so I've noticed one already. It's I think the weird thing about it is what they've done, and I don't think they've realised it, is they've put They've marked it into blocks of one, two, three, one, two, three, four, four across and three down. And and also A, B, C, but they've got these yellow circles with the numbers and the letters in red, bold, bold red. But it's taking part of the picture away. So I'm thinking, well, yeah, the difference between the picture is like it didn't have those yellow, yellow circles in it, and those lines, those white lines are across it. That's probably not what they're focusing on, is it? So six, so there's one straight away. One, two, three. Okay, so we've got this is one. Two, three, four, five. I think I found this sixth one as well, but it's hard to tell because it's... Yeah, so I found six. That's quite easy. What was that? Like a minute to find six. In fact, I think I found about nine. So 35 piece of cake. Fill the grid... Prize answer. So where is it? I spy. See page thirty-five. Thirty-five. Thirty. Thirty-six. Thirty-five. I'm confused. 
used. Follow flow to page 3 is new to the solution. Easy enter piece of cake. Solution. I spy. A1, A4, B1, B2, C2, C4. A1. A1. Got it, I got it fine. I did it good. I was very good. Very pleased with myself. This has been way more boring for me than it could ever have been for you. Oh, God. I know I now know why people look at the adverts. Because the adverts are way more interesting than the actual articles. I'm drawn to an advert, right? And it's headbands or hair accessories. I'm with band, it says. Pick up summer's must have hair accessories. So, headbands. And this is the most enjoyable page I've looked at. All colours and... I wish I could wear headbands. I think that's another clue that it's aimed at women because the adverts are all... It's it sounds a little bit sexist, doesn't it? So it's aimed at women. But all the adverts are female adverts. Like a female clothing or female items, dresses. Um, the stars of all of the articles are female. Uh, I say the stars, but... Andre oh that, oh that was a bad one I was open the window but it's still open, already open so I'm going to leave you on this one it's uh I actually thought it'd be a good idea to buy a magazine and I thought there'd be some something to to read out you know there might be something that I could read but it's it didn't quite work out that way Anyway, I'm going to go. It's still boring, isn't it? Couldn't have been... Oh, this is one of my most boring ones ever. For me. Anyway, take care. Bye.